in the uh, basement, the Gramps radio room, which is his 1921 operating position. got going on here is a, uh, is, it's a spark station. We have a Kennedy 221 shortwave receiver. It's a one-two regenerative receiver made in San Francisco. And it's feeding a two-step uh, audio amplifier, which in turn drives the Magnavox horn. This is over here is the control panel that uh, controls the spark gap transmitter, which is over here. And uh, this is a 1,000 watt uh, spark gap transmitter with a Thortis and flexible transformer uh, and the rotary spark gap. And uh, uh, let me demonstrate it for you. Okay, so from the control panel, we're keying it with a telegraph key and, and we're actually keying the primary of this 1,000 watt Thortis and flexible transformer which is, uh, so we're keying the 120 volts going into it. It's got a two, uh, 20,000 volt output into the spark gap, and then we'll be lighting up the dummy load, the little light bulb in the back. So let's see how brightly we can light that bulb. got a kilowatt going in and five watts coming out. How's that for energy efficiency? But hey, this was the only show in town back in 1921. So because the spark gap transmitter was so inefficient, when vacuum tubes made their debut, they very quickly displaced the old antiquated technology. And what we have here is a uh, first generation vacuum tube transmitter based on the uh, uh, first offering of RCA's uh, uh, vacuum tube offering. And in, uh, in 1921, they came out with this landmark publication that showed hams how to build their own transmitters. And uh, in it were the schematics to, uh, that showed uh, construction of the transmitter. And then in the back of that was a catalog of parts that uh, were available to, uh, to actually build uh, the uh, equipment. So what we have here, this transmitter is actually built with using all of the components that were available uh, in 1921. So this is a first generation vacuum tube transmitter. And when these transmitters first uh, uh, appeared on the air in the uh, early 20s, they very quickly displaced the uh, spark transmitter because they were so much more efficient. And you could focus a lot more energy right on the frequency you wanted. So that was the end of the, uh, uh, the, end of the spark era. So 21 was a good year because it shows the transition from Spark, which was king at the time, to the um, uh, incoming vacuum tube technology. Now what's interesting about this transmitter is that it used a magnetic modulator. So uh, the telephone transmitter uh, would be fed through a battery and it would uh, go right into the magnetic modulator. And it was basically a transformer that uh, was put in series with the antenna circuit. So basically, as you talked, it would screw up the cue of the antenna circuit, and that's how you would modulate. You'd kind of junk modulate the antenna with this magnetic modulator. But uh, it, it was convenient to build, and uh, the magnetic modulator was a relatively short-lived uh, uh, approach because it was so inefficient and it yielded such a poor result. So that's what 1921 looked like from a hand perspective. So what we have here are early Marconi uh, publicity pictures on glass plates, photographic glass plates. And uh, starting on the far left here is the instrument room showing the Marconi uh, station. This is a uh, Marconi installation on a shore station. This is a ship's printing press. And I'll come back to that in a minute. This is a, a radio room on a ship. 
This is a shore station. And this is another ship. And over here on the far right is the paper, uh, the daily paper that's distributed to the passengers aboard the ship that was printed in the ship's printing room. And the significance of that is that all of the news that appeared in that paper was received over the Marconi wireless. All of these photographs are from the year 1906, and a lot of people don't realize that this technology came to maturity that quickly.